Amen. You may be seated. It's great to see you today. Glad that you're here as we continue to worship through the Word today. I want to share with you a new series that we're beginning to kick off this week, and it's going to stretch for six weeks, and we're calling it Lousy T-Shirt, based on a book that's been written recently by Vince Antonucci, a friend of ours, church planter among the Christian churches. And I want to encourage you to consider picking up his book from the bookstore and reading through it over the next six weeks as we go through this series. I became a Christian and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. What's that about anyway? It's a great book that talks about how in, in our lives sometimes we settle for the t-shirt. Vince uses the illustration about a little girl whose parents went to Florida and they brought her back a t-shirt that said, my parents went to Florida and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. And he talks about how she missed the adventure. She was part of the family, but she missed the adventure of that trip. You know, as God's children, he's got a vision for our lives. John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full, to walk in the fullness of God's blessing and power and abundance. That's his vision for every one of his children. In your identity today, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, is that you are a child of God. And your Father in Heaven has a vision for your life. Why don't you just uh, state your identity with me today, would you? If you're a believer in Christ, would you just say, I'm a child of God this morning? I'm a child of God. Now say it like you're, you're excited about that. I am a child of God. Amen. That's who you are if you're in Jesus Christ. That's your identity. You are a child of God. And God wants to take you in your life on an adventure and a journey that is beyond your wildest dreams. He has goals and hopes and plans for you that if you could see now, would absolutely blow your mind. That's the kind of God we have. That's the kind of Heavenly Father that we serve. And you are His child if you're a follower of Jesus Christ today. So I want to spend a few moments as we begin this series together talking about the vision that God has for your life and for his family. You're a part of the family if you're a follower of Christ, but he wants you to be fulfilling your greatest potential in him, tapping all that he created for you to be and to do, to accomplish for his glory and for the good of others in this lifetime. So would you bow your head with me and pray, God, speak to me today through your word. Let's pray. Father, that's our humble prayer. Would you speak to us today, God, from your heart, O Lord, through my heart, to the hearts of every person in this room? This is your word. This is your family. We're your children. So help us, God, to capture the tailor-made message that you have in store through your spirit for every single one of us here today. Father, I thank you that you've got a vision for us that's beyond what we can even imagine. And I pray that today you would help your children begin to tap into their fullest potential and to live with the joy that you've created us to live in. Speak to us now, O God, in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. You've all heard the saying, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Right? Like the little boy who came home one day with report card in hand and he walked up to his dad and handed him his report card and his dad opened it, was astonished to see four F's, four failing grades and one C+. His father looked at the report card then looked at his son very seriously and he said, Well, son, obviously you spent too much time on that one class. (laughs) The, The mind is a terrible thing to waste and so is a life. And so is the power of God. So it's important for us to understand the fullness that God wants us to live in. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it to to abundance, to its fullest. Now prior to that, he said, we have a thief in this world, an enemy, Satan. He wants to steal your joy and rob you of reaching your full potential. He wants you to live life in a way that just kind of keeps you down. 
But God's vision for his children is far different. He wants you to soar. Kind of reminds me of the old parable about an eaglet, an eaglet's egg that fell among chickens. You may remember the old parable. And, and this little eaglet hatched and began to live among those chickens and believed it was a chicken. So all of its young life, this eaglet walked among the chickens and pecked at the dirt with the chickens. One day, it saw this beautiful bald eagle soaring across the sky. And that eagle had had the desire to stretch his wings and to soar into the heights. But all the other chicks laughed at that as a ridiculous thought. After all, you're a chicken. You're meant to stay on the ground just pecking and pecking. And for the rest of his days, that eagle pecked like a, ground, uh, like a chicken at the ground rather than soaring into the heavens, which he was created to do. All too often, I think we can compare the family of God, his church, to that eaglet. All too often, we might be able to compare our own lives to that eaglet. God's created us to soar and has a grand vision for every one of us, his children. But often we find ourselves content to just peck at the ground, not looking much beyond our own beaks, our own noses and needs. And often when we begin to feel the desire to stretch our wings and to really stretch out in faith and and lean into this vision that we believe God may have created us for, whatever that may be, as you begin to to really capture this this idea in, in this dream about what God has for you and your destiny in this world, and you share that with people, sometimes those pessimistic pew potatoes, they can douse your dreams. They can laugh at you as that's ridiculous. Who do you think you are anyway? And sometimes we just content ourselves then because of those pessimistic people around us to to live like chicks pecking at the ground. Kind of like the duck hunter who bought a new duck or duck hunting dog and, and, and he was so excited about his new dog. I mean, he just couldn't wait to show his buddy duck hunter this great new dog he had because the dog was incredibly special. I mean, he had a talent that no other dog in the world had that this hunter knew of. And so finally invited his friend to go duck hunting with him. He couldn't wait to show him how special his new dog was. And so they got out in the boat and went to the lake. And they're sitting there when the ducks flew. The duck hunter shot a duck. It fell into the lake. And he said, now you watch this to his friend. And that dog hopped out of the boat and ran across the top of the water. Picked up the duck. Ran all the way back to the boat without even getting a drop of water on him. The duck hunter is smiling from ear to ear. Two more times he shot ducks, and that dog hopped out of the boat, got a duck, and ran back to the boat, got in without getting wet. So finally, the duck hunter looked at his friend. He said, hey, you notice anything unique about my dog? And his pessimistic pessimistic friend said, yeah, that dog can't swim, can he? (laughs) Sometimes there are people around us in life that... Kind of have that same attitude. The the enemy uh, makes sure of that because he wants people to kind of rob us of our dreams and to keep us from the full destiny that God has for us in life. So the Lord says in his word in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 that we need vision. In fact, he puts it this way, where there is no vision, the people perish. Without the vision of God filling your life from day to day, We tend to to die inside as we content ourselves with far less than what God envisions for us in this lifetime. So the old preacher Vance Havner years ago said this, The vision must be followed by the venture. It's not enough just to stare up the steps. You've got to be willing to step up the stairs. So are you ready to not just grasp a vision, maybe a renewed vision for your life that God has for you today, but to find the the courage to step up the stairs and to get into the adventure, to take off the t-shirt and go on the journey with God in this life, living in all the fullness of his blessing and power in your life? Well, let's see what God can teach us through the example of the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts. If you have your Bibles, I want you to take your Bible and open with me to the book of Acts, chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 12 is going to be the passage we lean into today. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts is where you'll find 